Hi, I'm Stuart from the Norfolk Honey Company and welcome back to our Getting Started in Beekeeping series of videos for 2017. Today we're back at the allotment apiary to carry out a general check on our hive here just to see how things are progressing in preparation for the autumn and winter. It's going to be one of our last inspections of this colony. Uh, we if you recall, removed the honey a week or so ago and it's now time to start preparing them for their travel through the winter period and hopefully out the other side as a nice strong colony ready for next spring. If you've not yet subscribed, please do consider subscribing. Hit the little button in the bottom corner there and when you see the little bell symbol, just click on that and you'll get an update via email to let you know that we've uploaded another video. And don't forget the Facebook group, which is Stuart's Beekeeping Basics. And there we've got plenty of people willing to offer tips and techniques and lots of help for new beekeepers. So I'm gonna get my suit on and we'll open up the hive in what will be one of our last inspections for this season. So we're back at the hive, a little bit of smoke across the entrance. And then we can take the roof off. And the bees have been in this super and have been cleaning out the residual honey. So this super is above the crime board and so the bees have taken the residual honey out of these. Uh, but what you do find sometimes is that because the bees have suddenly found a, a late nectar source, is that they'll start filling the super with stores again and you can see this one we've actually got some nectar stores going back in so what we'll probably do is we'll leave this super on although we're we've got a commercial brood box here we could show you how we would under super a colony so we can feed them some extra sugar syrup over the coming weeks and then we can use this super to go beneath the brood box and give them some extra stores. On a commercial beehive, it's not generally necessary, but it'll be a, an interesting exercise to show you how we would use a super to give extra stores to a colony that is in a uh, national hive. So we'll just take this super off We still have the queen excluder on the colony, so the queen can't get through and into that super currently. So we'll just have a look and see how the colony is coping. We've got a bit of a damaged queen excluder that will need some repair work over the winter. Quick check for the queen on the underside of the Queen excluder, and then we can start our inspection. So we've currently got 12 frames in this uh, brood box, and you can see the problem that creates as I take this frame out, it just rolls bees and we don't want that situation. So this is the damaged frame that did have brood in and you can see they've now packed it full of stores. And we'll be looking to remove one of the frames, possibly this next frame, which was the frame that had the drone brood foundation in it. And we've still got some drone brood in here, but they've not really built anything out on the reverse side so we're going to just shake the bees off this frame and then I can show you what drone brood looks like so this is drone brood there's a little bit of stores around the outside but you can see the domed shape on the cappings and that indicates that it's drone brood not worker brood also you can see that the cells are a larger size Okay, so we're going to remove that frame and then we'll use a dummy board 
to secure the end space so that the bees don't then build into the space at the end of the frames. So this frame the queen has laid eggs in. We've got eggs and larvae across this frame and on the reverse side um, fewer eggs on that side but there are still a few eggs and through this inspection what I'm one of the things that I'm really looking for is the amount of stores that they have at the top of the frame so it's this section where I'm holding my hive tool that we'd like to see full of stores ready for use through the winter and in some large colonies even in a, a bigger hive such as a commercial hive you can find that the brood nest expands to such a size that actually they fail to store anything in the brood nest area at all and you have to then give them additional room but these have got some stores around the top here and we will expect to see the colony start to shrink in size the queen will now be reducing the amount of eggs that she's laying and as a result the brood nest will shrink back into a, a smaller three-dimensional rugby ball shape within the center of the brood nest nice frame of capped brood here and these are going to be winter bees that will emerge and help take the colony through the coming autumn and winter. So we're into the last week of August now and it's important that you start to think about feeding your bees for the winter. Here in the UK we need to make sure that that's done really by the end of September because the winter can sneak up on us quite early. We can have some very cold weather early in the autumn which means that you can't get sufficient stores into the bees in time for the really cold weather in the winter and the bees can then struggle and subsequently you would have to then feed them with some fondant over the winter and hope that the bees can get to it uh, and it's not too cold. Generally in the UK, certainly here in Norfolk, we always seem to have a few warm days through the winter and the bees can break the cluster and get to the food stores. So there's still a few drones in the colony and they will gradually be kicked out over the coming weeks because there won't be any drones kept through the colony in the winter. They serve no purpose to the colony apart from eating all the food stores. So here we're through to a frame of stores and the next two frames are both going to be stores as well. And what we really want is the bees to fill these up with their um, sugar syrup stores that will feed them in the coming weeks, but also any uh, nectar that they're now gathering, we'd like them to put into these frames as well. So I think what we'll do, instead of leaving a super on this one, I'll produce a video with a national hive and show you exactly what I do with a national hive. But this one will take the um, we'll take the super off. I don't know whether you can see that this bee has tried to sting my thumb and it's got its sting stuck in the rubber glove. I'm just going to try and ease it out. It hasn't actually stung me. There we go and she's away. So that's the first time I think in this colony this year that I've actually had a bee that has tried to sting or that I've trapped and has, has put its sting into the gloves but these gloves are quite strong and uh, although they can be susceptible to being stung through you do get an opportunity to to feel that a bee is on them and trying to sting and, and remove it 
Okay, so we'll close this colony up. We didn't see the queen, but there are lots of eggs. She may well have been on one of the frames, but I wasn't really too worried about seeing her. But we will now be reducing the number of times that we inspect through the winter because we don't want to risk any damage to the queen because now it would be very difficult to replace her and maintain uh, a strong colony. Okay, so we have our damaged frame here, but the bees have put lots of stores in it. So what I don't want to do is to now take this away and leave them without the natural stores that they've um, gathered. So what we're going to do is we're going to pop this one back in and I'm just looking down and what I've actually got is two high spots on these two frames. So I'm going to turn this frame around because if I now push the frame tight against the second frame in I'm going to crush bees against two high spots on the frame. So I can turn this around and that will actually put it back in its original orientation. I'll just brush these bees off here and then I can slide it across and there's a gap there, a natural gap. And so the bees won't get crushed. So I've mentioned a dummy board several times before and I don't think we've shown it on these videos. This is a dummy board. It's just a piece of plywood with a strip along the top that allows us to slide it down at the edge of the frames and it separates the frames and the brood nest and the bees from the extra large gap that we find at the end of this brood box. So that will enable us to keep the bees on the front side of this board as you look at it and the bees won't then go into the space behind and create lots of um, brace comb. The benefit of this is that it then makes it easier for us to be able to take the dummy board out when we're inspecting. So next spring when we come to inspect it'll be easier because we can take the dummy board and the first frame out that much easier than if we had the 12th frame that was forced in here. Okay, so now we have to just tidy up a little bit and just smoke the bees off the top of the frames. And then that will allow me just to clean up some of the wax that we've got on the, the top here. And if you clean the top bars and you tidy up and remove any excess propolis as you go, then that will help when you come to inspect in future days, weeks, and certainly next spring if it's nice and tidy and it just makes it easier to inspect. So we're not going to put the super back on, we're going to just tap these bees off, um, off the queen excluder. We don't need the queen excluder any longer. So that can be removed and then cleaned up in preparation for use next spring. We can shake the bees off the crown board. Again, we can just scrape off the brace comb that's been put on the top here. gather that up and then the crown board can fit back on nice and tightly
this is the frame that we're removing so we'll take this away and pop it in the freezer to kill any varroa that might be in these cells and then we'll render the wax down and clean the frame up and then all that remains is to just brush these bees off and then we can pop the roof on at an angle so another really good inspection uh, it's great to see them settling down ready for the autumn and winter there's still a lot of work to be done between now and uh, putting the smoker and hive tools away for the winter uh, but it's good to see that they're still really active and still out foraging on what little nectar and pollen there is uh, that remains we'll soon in the next few weeks be getting into some of the early ivy and the bees love to forage on that it can be problematic because it can granulate very hard in the brood nest but what we're looking for now is for the brood nest to actually start to reduce in size and once it starts to reduce we can then get a feeder on it and feed them some heavy sugar syrup and that way they'll backfill the empty cells as the brood nest contracts and that will hopefully help with the granulation problems that we have with ivy honey. As I mentioned what I'll do is create another video showing how I would use a super with a national beehive to provide extra food stores for uh, that colony going through the winter and we'll also show you how to use some thymol crystals in the sugar syrup to prevent it from going mouldy over the winter which is a really useful thing to have uh, to feed to your bees so that it doesn't cause any dysentery or mould to form inside the beehive itself. Don't forget we've got our uh, beekeeping basics videos going out on a Sunday and also our Maze More Apiary sponsored videos on a Friday and don't forget to take a look at our Patreon site which is patreon.com forward slash Norfolk Honey and that's uh, a site that you can go to to help support us in producing these videos. So we're going to get the bits and pieces away from the hive now and uh, get them ready for cleaning up. But until next time, thanks for watching.